I'm going to do a little video here on my uh, recent auction purchase. Uh, I've got a bunch of vintage ammo and some other little things. I'm just going to do a video on it. Uh, sorry for my voice because I'm just getting over a cold right now. So just kind of is what it is. You'll have to kind of put up with it. But uh, I wanted to make this video because I was sorting through the stuff here I just got in recently. So I'll start off with some of the smaller things. I got this is all from the same auction. So I got this little knife here. Um uh, it says I believe it says Pakistan on there. And this is a uh, Tonto blade. This is actually a true Tonto blade knife. I grabbed that because I don't have a, a Tanto blade uh, like a a fixed one and this one is actually really nice kind of heavy duty the blades not that bad on it it's it's got an edge on it so what else can you say it's a stainless uh, Pakistan it's the uh, grips are fairly decent sort of almost like kitchen knife style thing and it's pretty rough but I think it's a good knife so I grabbed this one and I got this one here it's a uh, fixed blade they call it a German style knife this is sort of like the Hitler Youth um, like sheaths or I guess it's like a scabbard is what it is. It, it's made of uh, metal. It, it It's probably aluminum. Unfortunately, I don't have a magnet. And then, uh, well, I'll take it out. And it's just like this, sort of like a, almost like a blunt style dagger. It's got a little edge on it. It could be sharpened. And it's got a sort of a bottle opener type thing here. Don't know how good that was going to be. I wish it didn't have that, but uh, again, is what it is. And the, uh, the handle, it's got like a German uh, style, I'll just say, of an eagle on here. And these aren't actually screws. They're just kind of fake screws. I don't know if this is actually a knockoff of a German knife, like an expensive German knife, I don't really know. And it's actually Taiwanese stainless, which is probably good. Uh, it looks decent, so there's this. I picked it up because it was fairly cheap and uh, something a little bit different. And it came with... Uh, uh, it's like a sharpener of some kind. It's kind of weird. I really I haven't looked this up yet. It's kind of weird. It's It's got, uh, I don't know if it's a flint for striking or if it's actually a knife sharpener. It's very smooth, whatever it is. It's a low uh, grit type of a thing. And then uh, it came also with this German pocket knife, which is made in China. And uh, it's actually a pretty cool knife. It's a little bit bigger than the other like pocket knives I have. It's maybe just a tad bigger. It seems like a good uh, knife. It's just plastic and then it's got that weird uh, eagle which isn't really a German eagle. It's just sort of like a just sort of looks like it. But uh, it looks like a decent uh, a decent knife and it's nice and light. A good uh, everyday carry type of thing and the only part that I picked up is I got one of these uh, uh, MP uh, I think it's uh, 141 or 151 I can't remember the name of it the little uh, Russian semi-auto 22 which um, I don't think I've done a video on it yet but I've had it for a few years uh, the only thing weird about it is that the uh, the mags are usually marked to the gun they'll have like a the serial number and then I'll have a one and the serial number and then half a two like that's what came with the gun and this one doesn't have any markings on it which is kind of weird but I picked that up because it's probably not too common so I figured I'd grab that 
Um, next, I will. I'll show the rifles that I picked up. I got this little 22 here. This is a Kui. Well, I'm gonna flip it around. This is the uh, Kui Canuck. It's the 25 caliber one, 25 rimfire, which is 25 Stevens um, long or 25 Stevens short. It'll fire either one. And you have here, you can see that it's, it's pretty old. I believe they stopped making this at the end of the 20s. So it's pretty old. And it's got the old markings, the uh, HW Kui machine and arms. Toronto, Canada, which is uh, which is pretty cool on there. That's kind of what really drew me to this gun. Like it's uh, older. It's got the older markings on it. It's not one you commonly see. And then it's got this real, almost like the Winchester, the real crescent style of uh, butt plate on it. I haven't really messed with these or or touched them up at all. Like it, uh, the screw just needs to be tightened on here. But this gun is complete, and uh, trigger guard, typical Kui, and it's got a swivel, like the piece that you tighten here, which is kind of different for a Kui, but it is original. Um, the stock, the only problem is, it has a crack right here, it's a pretty significant crack. It shouldn't uh, affect the functioning, but that's got to be fixed. It's pretty common. I think it, it, one of the things is people over tighten these things and then that is what really causes the cracks. There's a little dent here and then this is actually the uh, original bull handle. It's like this flat sort of checkered piece right here which is pretty neat. But it's just like your standard um, your standard Kui bolt with that weird extractor and everything and just everything is sort of like typical Kui. It's just an older model of it. Which the the, uh, the handle I actually um, I really like the handle. I believe it is supposed to be bent like that. Also, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that was from somebody uh, like messing with it or anything. And uh, a nice barrel. This is actually in very good condition. There's just a very small hint of. A speckle of rust on it no big deal and then the front sight which is nice it goes right up to the end of the barrel and it sort of has this t teeny little blade on it which is pretty nice for 22 and I should show the rear sight too dovetailed in there and it's got this weird cut it's almost like the the uh, the sight here was cut into that piece and then they folded it out which is really weird I've never really seen something else like that but it should work. It's just a little 25 caliber plinker and then you can see the uh, the muzzle there. And another thing about the Kui's is nice. They have nice thick barrels Re regardless of whether the um, the diameter of the barrel is tight in there. They have a nice thick barrel on them. All of them seem to be like that. So this is the little uh, um, like the prize that I got in the auction that I was most excited for. Um, little 25 caliber Kui. And next I have the, I've been looking for one of these for a while and I've seen tons of them and um, I didn't really want to pay too much for one so I found this one and it, uh, it's complete and looks to be in good working order as far as I could tell. The finish is almost completely uh, completely gone on it. I should uh, show the markings here. It just says Kui Repeater 22 which is the Kui Model 60. I don't know if uh, the Kui, there's a Kui like the way the markings go. I don't know if there's a Kui Model 60, Kui Repeater um, I think there's a Ranger repeater, I'm not sure, and then there's a 600 and all kinds of them. So I don't know how the models work, if this is actually a Model 60 or if it's just a repeater. I don't know how they different, differentiate them. 22 caliber, 
and it's only missing the little ramp from the rear sight which is no big deal I, I can find one of those but the patina you can see on the barrel there it has again that it's, it's it has no finish so it sort of has that rust just starting to form which could be cleaned but I kind of like the patina like that where they've uh, almost like the old Winchesters when they lose all their finish like that it's kind of neat and then uh, you get the dovetailed front sight it's pretty decent and the tube magazine um, I don't really need to go into how it works or whatever I could do a separate review maybe one day if I get take this out shooting or something and uh, so you've got the brass tube inside the magazine tube everything's good there the problem with this gun is actually the stock looks really really nice there's not really any dings or anything but it's cracked in a few different places you can see the crack here and a crack there um, it's just going to be have to have to be uh, fixed again. I think somebody tried to put a um, a sling uh, sling mount in here, and it ended up splitting the stock because people don't know how to put them in properly, and it's pretty common for splits like that to happen. And then it's like it's loose right now in the stock, and you can see the big piece here. But no, it shouldn't be a big deal to fix that. And then it's got that weird trigger guard goes right up to the um, where you take it down there this I'm not sure about but I have seen like there's a Phillips head and a slot screw I have seen both styles on Cooey's so I don't know if that's correct or some dude just threw that in there but it's in uh, pretty good shape like there was a whole bunch of them at the auction there was at least 10 and this is the one I decide on it's got like a custom uh, bolt knob on here somebody's added that to it which is cool the bolt everything is uh, it needs to be cleaned up I haven't really touched it but they're pretty cool it has the uh, the little follower there it comes right up and uh, anyway so that's uh, that's the other rifle I picked up I've been looking for one of these repeaters for a while so this is the one I I chose from the auction a lot of the ones they had were uh, they actually had bulged barrels in them a whole bunch of those cooies so you kinda have to watch uh, when you're bidding on that stuff now this is the uh, the main part of the stuff that I excuse me this is the main stuff that I picked up here uh, I think I'll start with the least interesting like I got a bunch of 16 gauge and um, 3855s because I've got that one gun that fires both of them and uh, I didn't really have any ammo so I got a bunch of uh, like I got these are mixed lots but I'll just um, throw them in together so there's a whole bunch of these uh, 16 gauge hulls there's a whole bunch of different um, cardboard ones there's a couple plastic ones in them and um, they're like older shells some of them are pretty interesting mostly Dominion and there's one uh, colonial there's a whole bunch of these colonial hulls in here so they're pretty good some of them are almost like they're like they've never even been used they're in like perfect condition for for reloading so those came as kind of a bonus and then I got a box lot of these um, 3855s there's a it's a whole huge mix of uh, 3855s you can uh, I'll just I won't go over each one but you can see the uh, various head stamps here of all the different ones and these ones are all those like I don't know if they call it uh, copper nickel jacketed or steel jacket or what you would call them but I got at least 10 of those in there and I got these are uh, you're just your typical like uh, copper jacketed ones soft point I don't know why this one took that weird color 
it's just a typical Dominion round, and yet it's it's like gold. I have no idea why it it patinaed like that. That's, it, it's really weird. Like I'll show the head stamps here on these. Some of them are pretty old. I mean, like some of them, uh, like in this lot here with the 16 gauge. I'll just move this. Some of these are like lead. Uh, they're like lead bullets. So they probably go back to the 1800s. And you can see the uh, UMC head stamp on there. And uh, so they're quite interesting. I got a, like a mini collection of these, but I, I kind of got them just to uh, test out the gun I got. Now I'll show some of the boxes here of stuff I got. So I got more of these uh, Dominion uh, soft points, 180 grain. There was, uh, it looks like that, in the CIL Dominion. You can't have too many of these because you come across so many of these over the years and it's just a handful in here just to just to use like I'll just shoot these they are they're not exactly hard to come by so I got a handful of those and in the lot was some 250 Savage I don't have a 250 Savage I do like the Savage uh, lever action rifles which I'm assuming they chambered it in, a, in a 250 Savage so there's a nice box of these are in really great uh, great condition actually that one looks like a reload down there probably wouldn't shoot that one but the uh, the others look alright so I mean there's a box of ammo it's a interesting cartridge and then of course you got the brass if you if you do find the gun that can fire them um, let's see I'll keep going with the rifle rounds oh, I got these I don't know the vintage on these it's so hard to tell and they just give you a patent date which is like 1886 but that's when the round originally came out and um, then there's other numbers on here I don't know if 10-6 is like um, like October of 06 or something maybe um, somebody might know I love these old uh, boxes all the pictures on them and uh, they call them metal patch bullets and uh, and then you've got a 99 could be 1899 for all I know and then there's nothing on there here's the top high velocity too for 3855 that's pretty cool anyways here's the uh, what the ammo looks like this is uh, probably the nicest thing of all you can see the primers they actually have red the W uh, is filled in with red it, you can just faintly see it on some of them like this one here in particular you could probably make out that it's uh, red on there which is really neat I don't know why they ever changed that I'm guessing they had problems with the uh, primers going off because of that they should have never changed that though that's so cool Anyway, so that's the one box, and this is the last box here that I got, which is uh, 30 government 06 soft points, 220 grain, and this is like a really good condition box. Stain, I don't know why it says stain less. I don't know what it refers to. I'm guessing the uh, the metal that the bullet like is the jacket on the bullet is somehow considered stainless maybe it's nickel or something and it's not supposed to rust I don't know it's, it's kind of weird but here's the uh, box 30 government 06 soft point in the back it's just the same the top has all your stuff I wish they would date these things they never put a date on them so I'll show uh, show uh, well, at least one here it's not a full box it's a mostly full box but it's not even uh, the bullet is is like 
I'm assuming it's copper and nickel, but it looks like it's just a copper jacket. And then that uh, oxidization, like, I don't know how the old these are. Well, I mean, obviously if it's 06, it's probably over 100 years old at least. And uh, here's your uh, head stamp, the way that they're head stamped, which... Um, those, the old American rounds are really weird. They always, the 30 caliber rounds, they call them like 30 USA and all different, um, you know, there's the 303s and stuff. Like, they're kind of confusing. So you've got 30, it's just 30G. It, it's, I'm assuming 30 government, but then 1906. That's how it's, it, it is, uh, that's how it's written on here, which is kind of neat. So put these, uh, I'll put these back. It's a really neat box. I've never really seen this box before. That's kind of what drew me to it. And then I ended up with, I'll start, these are all 16 gauge. 16 gauge shells. So I'll start with uh, this box of Imperial Slugs. You can see $3.20. I don't know where they would have come from. Again, I don't know the age. I'm thinking 50s, 60s for age. I don't know when they, like somebody will know right away uh, the age of them from the, from the box. Um, like again, you have a stamp here. It's like 15 or looks like 1-5 and then there's a number I can't make out and it looks like 55. Like it could be 1955. I really don't know. And then it's in perfect condition. The rifled slug. So here's the uh, really nice gold packaging. Montreal, Canada. Those are pretty cool. I like the uh, I doubt, I doubt I'll shoot them unless I get another 16 gauge like that's in uh, a little better condition than the one I got. But um, So there's these and I got a box of 12 gauge. They are uh, maximum or maximum uh, long range load and uh, you can see the but they're not actually like they always give you the recommendations here and some other stuff other additional information on there but there are a whole bunch of different uh, oh here's some useful information here um, it's dangerous with 16 gauge shells and 10 gauge guns like I think that's pretty obvious um, but anyways it's kind of interesting they do stuff like that back in the old days but they're all different um, they're all max, uh, Maxim shells, and they're that cardboard with the like preservative thing on them, and uh, they're all different. Um, you see, it's BB shot, long range smokeless. It says, and uh, here's the brass here. If it'll show up, uh, but a lot of them are cracked like this because they're so old. But I mean, they're just kind of collector shells, really, at this point. I suppose if you had to use them, you, they would still go off. These are kind of the things that you'd see in Mad Max when he shoots the thing and it just flares out. It's using old stuff like this. And that one, there's a different one here. It's a 3 inch Magnum. Number 2. This is a different. Uh, um, this is a different kind of shell, but it's that same, um, no, it's an Imperial one too. But it's, I got that same sort of, uh, like, uh, for, um, like for duck hunting in that. It's got that preservative on there. So there's a whole bunch of, just sort of mixed in there. So I grabbed that. Cheap enough. And get rid of this. And then, same sort of thing here. I got a couple boxes of these, um, 
16 gauge imperial shells. You see they look like this. All your information on here tells you what to use for whatever you're hunting. Which is nice. And one of those Canadian tire tags, unfortunately they don't ever price it, so and then it says seven and a half shot. But again, both of these, like I won't go into both of them because it's just a mix of, uh, it's a, <coughs> well here, this would give you a date. I'm sure that's, um, it's probably January of 64. I would think that's what that is. But there's a whole bunch of different ones in here. There's um, sevens, fives. This one here, oh, that's a BB shot. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, see, it's a Canuck shell. It's not even an uh, Imperial shell. There's like a mixture. A mixture in both of these um, boxes. So I got those two. This is the coolest one of all. This is a really old Winchester 16-gauge uh, box. So I'll show the uh, box you can see here. And it's loaded with smokeless powder too, which is nice. And uh, you've got all your information on there. And it looks like they stamped the uh, this piece here. It wasn't like part of the label. It looked like they stamped that onto the label so you knew what was in there. And uh, some numbers there don't know what they mean. And uh, you can see there. And on the bottom... It, uh, like, see, the patent goes up to at least 1903, so who knows when these were from? At, at, at least 1903. So they're at least probably 100 years old, at least. Um, there's some more information on there. And then to open these, it's a little bit different, uh, a little bit different than our, our normal way of doing it. We just lift the lid off here. And these uh, shells are pretty much just the way they uh, the way they've been for a hundred years in their paper hull. And you have your information here. Your Winchester. Uh, oh, it says uh, up at the top. I don't know if it'll show up. It says Dupont on uh, over top. Which is cool. And then it's got this really awesome primer. The primer sticks up a little bit like that. But then it's got um, the Winchester. Uh, I think it says New Haven. Uh, no, it just says. I'm trying to read it. But it says. Uh, I think it says. New. And then it's got number four on it. It's really weird. It says around the primer there. Really cool. Really cool old shell. I bet these would still fire like with no problem because they seem to be kept. They're a little bit a little bit dirty from like dust or something, but they they look to be in like mint condition, the shells anyways. So this is my uh hull, like this is what I picked up from the last auction. Some old ammunition, a lot of old Canadian ammunition and a couple of uh, old Canadian guns and um, that's about it for now so uh, thank you for watching